In this video, I'm going to talk about a new procedure in Stack Graphics version 16 called Multiple Correspondence Analysis, or MCA for short. What MCA does is takes tabular data and displays it graphically so that we can visualize the information in the data. However, unlike a correspondence analysis where you're typically looking for relationships between two different variables, a multiple correspondence analysis takes levels of a single variable and looks for associations within that set. For example, uh, in Michael Greenacre's book on correspondence analysis in practice, he talks about a survey that was taken to assess changing attitudes toward whether women who have children or are married should work or stay home. A very large survey was done and, and they asked people actually four different questions. Uh, something like, you know, should a woman work? when she's married? Should she work when she has small children? Should she work after the children are gone from the house? Uh, questions like that. You can read all the details uh, in his book. I, I really suggest that you do. Um, what I've indicated here is some of the information from that survey. Again, as I said, they asked thousands of respondents four different questions which are labeled here as Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. There were four possible responses to, to the question. One was the woman should work full time. And that's a, shown as actually a capital W. Another possible response was that uh, women should work part time. That's a small W. Uh, or perhaps uh, the respondent said they should stay home. That's a capital H. Or perhaps they had no opinion or weren't sure. That's shown as a question mark. So you can see, for example, here, the first respondent said women should work full-time when asked question one, should stay home when asked question two. For questions three and four, the response was, well, they should work part-time. We also can tell from the survey what country these individuals were from. And in our data set, we're going to be looking actually at responses only from respondents in East and West Germany. Uh, DW here uh, is indicating West Germany. Information was also collected in the column called G about whether the respondent was male or female, and in the column labeled M, whether they were married or single or divorced, uh, what their marital status was. I'm going to show you how this type of data would be analyzed. One way to analyze data like this is to first construct what's called a BERT matrix. Now, what a BERT matrix does is it creates a cross tabulation of the responses to all of the questions. The BERT matrix, in this case, since there are four questions and four responses to each question, 4 times 4, that's 16. The BERT matrix will actually have 16 rows and 16 columns. And what it does is it shows you how often respondents answered a certain way to one question and a certain way to another question. For example, I, I have a cell labeled in red here, which corresponds to saying with response to question number one, that the women should work full-time and to response uh, to question two that they should stay home. So 1,131 respondents said work full-time when asked question one and work not at all stay home when asked question two. In MCA, the one we're going to do in just a moment, we'll do a correspondence analysis, a standard correspondence analysis on this BERT matrix. I've loaded into the Stack Graphics data sheet a data file called survey, survey.sgd. 
This actually has information about 3,418 respondents and how they've responded to those four questions. To do a multiple correspondence analysis, I'll go to the top menu to describe multivariate methods and select multiple correspondence analysis. Now I'm going to take all seven columns in this data sheet, which are the responses to the four questions plus the country, the gender, and the marital status, and put it in where it says columns. When I press OK, the multiple correspondence analysis options dialog box will come up. It'll ask me first off how many dimensions I want to extract. We'll leave that set to two for the moment. How many supplementary columns I have. Now in this case, I have three supplementary columns. The last three columns are not to be included in the analysis, but I'd like to plot them uh, on the correspondence map to see perhaps their relationship with some of the other columns. I can choose to analyze the BERT matrix, which is the default, or something else called the indicator matrix. Uh, again, you can read all about that in Michael Greenacre's book if you're interested. I'll now press OK, and this will allow me to select and different tables and graphs. By default, it's set to display the analysis summary, the inertia and chi-square decomposition, a scree plot, and a two-dimensional correspondence map. That sounds like a good selection, so I'll press OK and let it start to do the computations. When the computations are complete, an analysis window will open. The analysis summary in the upper left will show you the BERT matrix, the cross tabulation of all the responses for all of the columns of interest. You can take a look at that if you like. Of more interest is the graph in the upper right. Now this is called a scree plot. What this is used to do is to determine how many dimensions are required to explain all of the significant information in that BERT matrix. Now, since the BERT matrix has 16 rows and 16 columns, one could extract up to 15 dimensions. However, only four of the eigenvalues are above the horizontal line, which means that one would only be getting significant information as one extracted up to the first four uh, principal dimensions from the matrix. The percentage of the variation in the two-way table that's represented by the first principal dimension, the first two, the first three, and so forth, can be seen by going down to the lower left where it says inertia and chi-square decomposition. The column labeled cumulative percentage shows you the percent of the variation in the table that could be explained by projecting the data down to one dimension, into two dimensions, into three dimensions, and so forth. In this case, approximately 65% of the variation amongst the responses to the different questions could be represented by plotting points in two dimensions while a little bit more than 76% could be represented by plotting them in three dimensions. To see how the responses are related, I'll double click to put this table away and then double click in the bottom right to display a correspondence map, a 2D correspondence map. There is a point on this plot corresponding to each response to each question. Now, points that are close together means that the way respondents answered those questions is very similar. Points that are far apart uh, means that the response to those questions was very different. 
you can see, for example, that all over toward the right, there are points labeled Q1 question mark, Q2 question mark, and so forth. These are the responses of the individuals saying, I don't know or I'm not sure on question one, question two, question three, question four. So actually, respondents that answered, I'm not sure, tended to give a very similar response on all four of the questions. On the other hand, let's look at the, the second dimension. The second dimension here um, sort of contrasts respondents who answered they should stay home to questions one and four versus they should work full-time on questions two and questions three. Again, by looking at the positioning of the points on this map, you can see similarities and differences uh, between the way the questions were answered. Now, as we saw, it, it really requires a third dimension to capture at least 76 76% of the variability amongst the respondents. So let's uh, go to the tables and graphs button and instead of a 2D correspondence map, ask for a 3D correspondence map. Okay, this will bring up a plot of the responses to the different questions in three dimensions. Now you can see dimension one basically a contrast between those people that were not sure versus those people who had an opinion. That's left to right. Front to back is dimension two. That's the second dimension we had looked at before. And now dimension three splits people out in a somewhat different way. Actually, I think I'd have to give this a little thought to determine what the three dimensions are actually representing. Give it a try yourself. Uh, let me know what you think. One new feature of version 16 that's quite useful on these maps is the new pan and zoom facility. Let me go back for the moment to that two-dimensional correspondence map double-click to make it large. You can see there's quite a bit of over-plotting of points in the middle of the plot, which actually makes it a little hard to see what's happening there. If I go up to the analysis toolbar, I can press the button labeled zoom or pan. That will allow me to expand along the X and along the Y dimensions. This has the effect, in this case, of pulling the points apart so I'll have a better ability to look at them. I can now grab the scroll bars to the right and along the bottom and scroll top to bottom or left to right, which will now distinguish better amongst these points. Now, one thing that's interesting on this plot is that you see information on those supplementary columns. For example, this point here, this plus sign sort of a little bit to the right and down that says M dot SI, that means that those were folks that had a marital status of single. Now, being a little bit toward the right, it tends to imply that people that were single perhaps were less sure about their response than, for example, the point labeled M.MA, that's married, or M.SE, separated, or M.DI, uh, that's divorced. As far as gender is concerned, I see the females, G dot F, not very much different than the males, G dot M, perhaps a little bit more 
likely to say that the women should work than stay home, but they're really not very far apart. You should give this a try yourself. It's very interesting and a lot smoother when you do it using the software than it appears to be with our Adobe Captivate uh, application here.